Hey everybody, it's Gomledex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing some more Historic Brawl with another one of the new two Arena Commanders from the Multiverse Legend reprints. Today we're going to be playing with Yuri, Master of the Review. Yuri is a black and red for a 1-1 legendary human shaman. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one plus one counter on Yuri, and when Yuri dies, he deals damage equal to his power to any target. So this is a pretty fun Rakdos Sacrifice Commander that's going to play a little differently than your normal Rakdos Sacrifice decks. Most Rakdos Sac decks, you're going to make a really wide board of tokens and sacrifice them over time for incremental value, pinging your opponent a bunch as you do it. With Yuri, you're kind of a sacrifice combo deck. Yuri gives you this one kind of lightning rod to stack up all of your, all of your value into, try to make this one really big explosive ticking time bomb to then sacrifice at a later time so if you have a bunch of nice cheap expendable stuff like you always want things like treasure tokens are really good with yuri you can buff yuri up pretty quickly trying to get them up to like 10 power or something and then sacrifice them to something like a fling potentially so that when yuri dies he's going to deal the damage from fling's ability as well as from his own triggered ability to hit your opponent for probably well over lethal by the time you're sacrificing to a fling so some really powerful combo oriented rakdos sacrifice stuff going on in this deck should be a pretty fun one to play around with but we'll get into the full 99 have a look at every card in the deck now Starting off at 1 mana, we have Annihilating Glare as a cheap removal spell that can also sacrifice a card. Cult Conscript is a nice recursion card, being one of the cheapest cards to keep bringing back to your board after sacrificing it. Dockside Chef is a sacrifice outlet that lets you draw cards. Eaten Alive is another very cheap removal spell in a deck that already wants to sacrifice cards. Scornblade Berserker is a cheap way to sacrifice something for card advantage. Shambling Ghast is great in this deck because you can sacrifice the Ghast for value, and then it replaces itself with a treasure token that sacrifices itself. The Beamtown Beatstick can fuel you with a bunch of treasure tokens while giving Yuri Menace, which could be pretty good because Yuri is going to be getting very large very quickly. Goldhound is a treasure token on a stick to ramp you up a little bit as well as get another sacrifice trigger. Lightning Bolt, just a staple for red Historic Brawl decks, super efficient removal, as well as a potential burn spell to shoot your opponent's face with. Ragavan can produce treasure tokens every time Ragavan hits your opponent, so that can give you some more expendable things to sacrifice, and the great thing about all these treasure token producers like Ragavan, Sticky Fingers, Beamtown Beatstick, and so forth, is that you don't need an alternate way to sacrifice the treasure tokens, they can do it themselves and they'll still trigger Yuri for value. So Sticky Fingers, Ragavan, Strike It Rich, Goldhound, Beamtown, Beatstick, all these treasure tokens are kind of in here for the same purposes. Thud is just a one mana sorcery speed version of Fling, another way to throw Yuri at our opponent and hope that he uh, just finishes them off pretty quickly. The Ozolith is super sweet in this deck. If you have a Yuri on the board and your opponent is playing a ton of removal and you're only able to get two or three counters on your Yuri at a time, then at least every time they remove Yuri, you can put all the counters back on the Ozolith. So the next time you play him, you can put all the counters right back onto him when you go to the beginning of combat step so that you don't really lose any of that uh, that time that you've spent putting a bunch of plus one plus one counters on him. And if they keep defeating him with destroy spells and stuff and not exile cards, then you could potentially be shooting your opponent every time Yuri dies and then still getting all those plus one plus one counters back when you replay the Yuri later. Blood Artist is just an absolute staple for every sacrifice deck, giving you a nice life gain and life loss trigger whenever you're sacrificing creatures. Deadly Dispute, very efficient card draw that comes with a treasure token as well for a sacrifice deck. Dreadhorde Invasion gives you a bunch of expendable zombie armies. Gixian Infiltrator is like a Yuri without the death trigger. So if we're playing against an opponent with a ton of interaction, cards like Gixian Infiltrator give us other ways to potentially try to close out the game, give us some other creatures that we could try to turn into massive threats. 
Infernal Grasp is a staple removal spell for any black deck. Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia is great with, with uh, Yuri here because even if you don't have any other way to sacrifice your cards right now, the zombies do sacrifice themselves to trigger Yuri. Zulaport Cutthroat is basically another Blood Artist. This one only triggers when your creatures die, but that's still good for a sacrifice deck. A Braid is some more staple interaction. Blood Aspirant is another Gixian Infiltrator, Yuri-style card that's going to get really big as the game progresses. Fling's another finisher. Harmonic Prodigy can double Yuri's abilities, both of them. So now whenever you sacrifice something, Yuri's going to get two plus one plus one counters. And more importantly, when Yuri dies, you get to do twice as much damage as Yuri's power. Or you could just choose two different targets for Yuri's death trigger either way really good value from harmonic prodigy magda brazen outlaw can produce some treasures anytime you can get in with your dwarves i think the only dwarf is magda though but just a another treasure producer unleash fury another combo card making yuri's power massive when yuri's about to die body dropper is another one of these yuri style threats that gets bigger and bigger as we sacrifice cards Fatal Grudge makes each player sacrifice a non-land permanent, which is great, because you're going to have a lot more expendable stuff unless you're in a sacrifice mirror match or a token matchup. Klain is great with how much we love treasure tokens in this deck. Oni Colt Anvil is a way to make sure that you're getting a sacrifice trigger every single turn, because once you have one construct, you can start having that construct replace itself with the sacrifice ability every turn. Arcane Signet and Mindstone are Mana Ramp. They're pretty much staples in most Historic Brawl decks, but Mindstone a little better than usual in here because it does have a Sacrifice ability. Treasure Map does require a bit of a mana investment. Two mana up front, then you have to scry a few times, but once you flip this, this is going to give you multiple Treasure Tokens, which is multiple Sacrifice Triggers, as well as the Treasure Cove itself. So if we're producing more Treasure Tokens than we need, we can start sacrificing them to draw cards. Black Market Connections is sweet in a sacrifice deck. We can keep getting those treasure tokens, or we can make some three twos to sacrifice, or we could draw some extra cards. Plague Crafter is another one of these cards that makes each player sacrifice a permanent. Skullport Merchant gives us more sacrifice card draw. Woe Strider gives us a free instant speed sacrifice outlet, which is always great, even if the impact of the ability you're getting for sacrificing something isn't the greatest, it's still giving us a way to sacrifice our cards without having to spend any mana at instant speed, which is really, really good. Then anytime we want to chump block, we can chump block and get a sacrifice trigger to help with Yuri's ability, making him bigger and other stuff like that. Ayara, Widow of the Realm, is one of the new sacrifice outlets. That's a pretty nice one. This one doesn't really work with tokens, but it's very strong with high mana value permanence. Braids is a sacrifice kind of card draw engine, potentially. You're either making your opponent sacrifice some stuff, or you're making them take two damage and you get to draw cards as you sacrifice things. Murderous Rider is another staple removal spell. I just like the card a lot. I also just really like the Eldraine Showcase card style, so I couldn't resist slapping a Murderous Rider in here. Captain Lannery Storm, another incredibly quick treasure token producer. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, again, one of the best red cards kind of ever printed. Probably one of the best cards, best red cards on Arena, alongside Lightning Bolt and like Ragavan. But uh, it does actually legitimately synergize super well with this deck. It's not just in here because it's a, a staple. Both the 2-2 Goblin that produces treasure tokens that you get on the front of this card and the reflection of Kiki-Jiki play very well because the Goblin giving you those treasure tokens gives you more treasure tokens that sacrifice themselves and the reflection of Kiki-Jiki can give you duplicates of creatures that also sacrifice themselves in the end step. So Fable the Mirror Breaker, super sweet in here. Furnace Reigns lets us steal an opposing creature, and if we manage to deal combat damage to our opponent with it, we'll also get a treasure token. Then, of course, the plan is to sacrifice whatever creature we stole from our opponent. Professional Facebreaker is another treasure producer. 
Urbrask's Forge is a way to sacrifice a permanent every single turn off of its own effect, and eventually this will get large enough to be a win condition on its own, producing like five ones with Trample and Haste. That damage can stack up pretty quickly. Uh, Nax is sweet for sacrifice decks because every time you're losing a non-token creature, you're replacing it with a 1-1 that can't block. Now that's not that valuable of a creature, but just the fact that it is a creature means you can sacrifice those satyrs. So now instead of just sacrificing your non-token creature, you get to sacrifice your non-token creature, get a satyr, and sacrifice that as well. So you're kind of doubling up your sacrifice potentially. Chandra Acolyte of Flame is a very good way to trigger your cards that care about sacrificing permanence because you get two one ones that sacrifice themselves every turn. So again, even without a sack outlet, Chandra is going to trigger two sacrifices a turn. Judith the Scourge Diva is just a sweet card for any Rakdos deck, but especially one that can get a decently wide board state with tokens and that is going to be sacrificing a lot of cards, and we're doing both of those. We've got Lagomos, Hand of Hatred, another card that gives us a guaranteed sacrifice every single turn off of that 2-1 elemental, and if we're doing a bunch of sacrifice stuff, we might even be able to search our library for any card and put it into our hand with the secondary effect. Mayhem Devil's an absolute banger. If you've never played a sacrifice deck before and you haven't seen the power of Mayhem Devil, this card wins games super quickly. This is an absolute must-kill threat if you're playing against a Sacrifice deck, because if somebody resolves a Mayhem Devil, you're probably going to die in two turns maximum. It just adds so much to all of the Sacrifice that you're doing. Either just flexibility and versatility, being able to chip away at your opponent's valuable creatures and stuff, or just adding a bunch of damage to everything you're already doing, just poking your opponent in the face. Got Stormclaw Rager for a cheap way to sacrifice things to draw cards. Grim Hireling for another treasure producer. Deadly Derision for a solid removal spell that gives us treasure. Atsushi for a solid dragon that can spit out a bunch of treasure when it dies. Immersturm Predator is another free sacrifice outlet. You can just sacrifice a creature at instant speed at any time for free to... Uh, give the Predator Indestructible. Again, that's not going to give you any extra value after the first time you sacrifice something, but it still gives you a way to sacrifice things if they were about to die anyway, chump blocking and stuff. Gold Span Dragon, great for any deck that likes treasure. And Wrinkle and Torbrin, another super flexible, super nice card for this kind of archetype because it produces a bunch of treasure tokens, and it can make everybody sacrifice creatures. It could even add to our damage. So great stuff from Wrinkle and Torbin. Last but not least, at the top end, Liliana, Dreadhorde General. Six mana, six loyalty planeswalker, draws us cards as we're sacrificing our creatures. Spits out more expendable zombies if we need more sacrificial fodder. Or she can make each player sacrifice two creatures, which is great. And if we get to the ultimate, that's obviously just completely absurd. So that is... All of the non-land cards in the deck, the mana base is relatively self-explanatory here. Of course, all of the best dual lands on color. We also have Command Tower, as always. But then we're running every single Evolving Wilds slash Terramorphic Expanse style land, every single kind of fetch land that's available, because every one of these lands that sacrifices itself does trigger Yuri, Master of the Review, as well as like Gitaxian Infiltrator if we have that on board. We also have Treasure Vault in here if we get really late in the game and have nothing else to do with our mana. We can sacrifice the Treasure Vault to get a bunch of treasures, then sacrifice all the treasures, get a bunch of sacrifice triggers there. For other staples I'd put into every red and black deck, there's Sokenzin, the red Channel Land, Castle Embrith, the red Throne of Eldraine Castle, and then Takanuma, the black Channel Land, and Castle Lockthwain the black uh, throne of eldraine castle and outside of the staples we have a few sacrifice lands the hostile hostel gives us another way to sacrifice some creatures after we've sacrificed a few we get a very big just monster house i guess <laughs> which is kind of funny 
Uh, Phyrexian Tower, we can start sacrificing creatures to ramp up a bit, get two mana out of just one land, so we can play like a, a four mana spell on turn three or a five mana spell on turn four. And for the final sacrifice land, we have Westvale Abbey, which is just if we have enough cards on board, we can flip this into a pretty quick finisher, a 9-7 Flying Lifelink Indestructible in Haste, which should close out the game super quickly. So that is a look at everything in the deck. It's a pretty fun strategy today. Uh, the one big flaw of this sort of deck is it's pretty weak to removal because the idea is you want to get this Yuri as large as possible before it dies. So if your opponent's a very controlling deck that's running a million removal spells, you can have some issues. Now you could build around that a little bit and run a bunch of cards like Swiftfoot Boots to give your Yuri hexproof. But I think I'm just going to let Yuri bite the bullet in this 1v1 sort of format. I don't want to slow the deck down a decent bit by throwing a bunch of cards that help Yuri survive and get hexproof and stuff in here. Because then there's just a lot more setup. I think I'd rather just try to curve out as best as I can, keep my fingers crossed, hope Yuri dodges removal for a few turns, and then we just go wild. But I don't know. We'll see how it plays out as we head into the gameplay. All right, here we are on the play against Vorinclex, which is just mono green. Fatties, mono green, big stuff, beat sticks, grabs some extra lands, gives them a gigantic trampler. So probably just going to be playing some very big creatures, I would imagine. Uh, I'll keep a command tower. It's a little high on mana, but I do want a lot of untapped lands right now, because I've got some tapped ones here. I think I'm just going to roll out with our commander and then start playing all these sack lands for a little bit. And hopefully, since they're mono green, they don't have a lot of interaction. There should be a pretty good matchup for us. I think mono green seems kind of like the perfect matchup. So that should be the matchup where they have the least interaction. All right, well, that's going to be unfortunate for our opponent. Since we get to kill the ornithopter here. Topiary Stomper, they're still ramping up for sure. Grab a basic land, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Okay, we'll amass one Zombo. We've got an untapped land if I need four mana here. I don't think I do though. Let's just Goldhound Fabled Passage. This thing can't block, right? Yeah, can't attack or block. So attack, get one extra damage. Grab a Swamp this time. We've got an Unleash Fury up at instant speed. Don't think I'll be using it, but it is a thing I could theoretically use. Lucamina Moon Druid. So they get a forest. They can specialize into the bear form that gives all their creatures plus one plus one trample. Yep, that's some mono green beat sticks right there. All right, body dropper, that is nice. All right, I should have played this Phyrexian Tower earlier so I could sack the zombie army before I get a new one. A little late now, but that would have played out well. Oh, Goldhound has Menace. I could send that in too, but I will be sacrificing it. If I can get Yuri up to 9 power right now, they'll die, because I can unleash Fury to make it 18. So three, four, five, six. I can make it up to six. We're on the way. Allosaurus Shepherd. You can give their whole board all of their elves. 
can become five five dinosaurs. I'm gonna say it gives them plus five plus five or something, but no, it just turns them into five five straight up. All right, let's do that right now. Black market connections. We can get a treasure every turn now. Okay, let's annihilating glare. Vornclex. Sack the zombie army. And that should make it so they don't have good blocks for Yuri this turn. I guess Topiary Stomper can block now. No, they've well, they do have seven because this secret land creature they have here. So they could double block Yuri. Uh, but then I can Gold Hound and Body Dropper. No, Body Dropper can't sack itself. I could Gold Hound make it a 6-6 six, six, trades there and shoot them for six. I mean, it's fine. Alright, chump block Yuri. Sure. Could sack the gold hound right there, and then I would get um one more damage out of it. But I like being able to chump plus sack if they don't flip everything into trample here. And just having it at instant speed is nice. Trigger things at instant speed. Okay, they're just going to wild shape to give their board trample. It's 12 damage on board. And they're just going to pass turn, hold it all up for blocks. All right. I'm just going to go for it because it's fun. And uh, we'll see if they have any interaction. But I'm just going to go for it because it's fun. If they don't have interaction, they're dead. They don't have anything to instant speed mess with Yuri here. I wonder how big we can get this, Yuri. Very big is the answer. This is like the pop-off turn here. We put the backup ability on Yuri, so we just need one mana up to sacrifice after all this. Nonsense. The Jadar I could play? Sure. Can't actually sacrifice the Jadar, or I won't have the mana for Unleash Fury and Sack Yuri. But I could play Jadar. Alright, Sack Yuri, draw a card, deal 20 do 22 to our opponent. And there you go. Yuri combo pops off since we get a matchup where our opponent just can't have too many removal spells and ways to interact with us at instant speed. So mono green looks like a pretty good matchup for the sacrifice combo deck. All right, here we are against a Moti, Celebrant of Bounty, the very fun Cascade Ramp Sorta Commander, letting you cast additional spells whenever you cast a spell with mana value six or greater. And they're always random ones off the top. Cascade was a pretty sweet mechanic from um, from Alara, Shards of Alara. Alara Reborn was the set where it came out, but that's the block that it came from. Do some pretty cool, pretty fun stuff. 
All right, Yuri, Master of the Review, is going to start things out for us. Our opponents are still on the full ramp. Overgrown Battlement, Settle the Wilds. We'll play Black Market Connections first here to get the ramp going. Yeah. I decided to go for Mayhem Devil to threaten a little more damage, but it's not going to get through a 0-4 anyway. Although I do get to just sacrifice a treasure token post-combat to kill the Battlement. So I guess this does still work out. But it may have been better to just play Black Mark Connections this turn instead of Mayhem Devil. Either way, I was going to play the other two next turn, which is now. So let's... See, they just recast Emoti if she dies, so I don't like the Mayhem Devil trade very much. So I kind of feel the need to strike it rich. This way I can get in for damage. And I can kill the Battlement if they block two thanks to Terramorphic Expanse. But I'm going to hold it up so I can sack it during their turn if I want. Okay, let's kill the Battlement. So again, we play it main phase one there so that if they block we can kill it. But we don't just crack it immediately, that way if they don't block, we can kill Emoti when they recast her. I think that, that turn was a pretty solid line, even if my earlier line was pretty bad. Shoot myself for a million, let's go! Ooh, Evolving Wilds. If I just play an untapped land though, I'm casting a Liliana unless they have a counter spell. I'm gonna try. Liliana resolves. Let's go. Get a Zambi. And pass the turn. Got an Omniscience coming up or something? It's got to be one of those, like, immediately win the game sort of cards at this point. Mortal Sun shuts off Liliana. And then Vorinclex is one blocker. I think they're just dead. We've got a Fling here and an Evolving Wilds. I'm pretty sure they're just dead. Especially with another treasure token here. Yeah, this should... This should probably do it. Fling at the ready to go crazy. I need the fling. Maybe. So what, they block... If they block Yuri, they still take 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus 7. Yeah. I don't even need to fling. They're just super dead. Just explosive. Alright, well... That was pretty massive stuff. That was a lot of Mayhem Devil showing how wild that card is, as I said during the deck building. That thing is phenomenal in Sacrifice decks. Here we are against Shield Red. Mono Black. Here we are now against Shield Red. Mono Black Commander. Makes us sacrifice a non-token creature Planeswalker when she hits the board. Our deck should be decent against Shieldred, but we'll see what they're up to here. This doesn't look keepable. No black source is pretty bad. Take our free mulligan. This is keepable. Okay. Drop. 
Dockside Chef. Treasure map turn two from our opponent. Here's our Yuri, Master of the Review. Send in for one. Probably going to play Dread Horde Invasion next turn so we can start amassing zombies to sacrifice. We'll want to start sacrificing them to Dockside Chef first. Cemetery Tampering, a self-mill card. If they get to 20 cards in their graveyard, they can cast their hit away card for free. Their hideaway card, but the one that is hidden away. I should have theater pre-combat. Brain fart. Let's go. Alright, let's get another mountain. I got two swamps in hand. Missed out on one point of damage, like a fool, a buffoon, instinctually playing my lands post-combat. What is this? What on earth is that? Cling to dust? Okay, exile a card from a grave, gain three or draw a card. It's an escape card. So they're probably running, with Shieldred, in order to flip Shieldred, they need uh, eight or more cards in our graveyard. So they're probably running like all of the uh, mill both players cards and then all of the self mill value like cemetery tampering to profit off of running all of the cards that mill each player anyway. They've got a Tetsamok in hand, one of the best limited bombs of all time. It just is a one-sided board wipe that comes with a 6-6. Six -six. have to dump a bunch of mana into it though. And they will not have the mana to play that next turn unless they Dark Ritual. Now let's drop the Blood Artist here. Get one more point of damage in, sacking the zombie army. I'm going to want to sacrifice that before my next turn regardless. So that I get another 1-1 one, one instead of just putting a plus one plus one counter on the first one. Ooh, Terramorphic Expanse is the draw. Out of all the lands that I could draw, I do like that one. Milled some pretty sweet cards. Cavalier of Night, Gix's Command. Dream Devourer is just kind of whatever, but the other two are very powerful. They have five mana now. They could cast their commander. Shieldred would force us to sacrifice a non-creature. They're going to go for the Tetsamok reveal, put a prey counter on Blood Artist, and cast the other Shieldred. I see. Don't want to Infernal Grasp that? I kind of do. I kind of do. I'm about to lose my whole board state, so I don't want to play... I guess it's fine to play another creature. Yeah, I'm going to want to kill Shieldred regardless. Let's just do it right now. Alright, draw. Hit a Stormclaw Rager. Oops. I thought that next was to move to my main phase because of all the wonky stuff Shield was doing. Putting a stop during my upkeep automatically. I could have gotten one more damage in here by playing Terramorphic Expanse first.
Yagmoth the Rain Physician. Another free sacrifice outlet kind of card. I think they might just be dead for going for Yogmoth here, but I guess they didn't have the sixth mana for Tetsamok. They're down to nine now. I guess I just crack the Terramorphic now then. There's an Eaten Alive? So I don't think I even need the fling now. I think I still sack my uh, zombie army. Five, six, seven, eight, nine from sacking the magna treasure. Yeah, I don't even need fling. Let's get a blue mana. And there you go. Things are still more than explosive enough for us there. Just aggro them out. Could have been a very different story if they hit the sixth land for that Tetsamok, but missed that one land drop, and our deck's going to be aggressive enough to close out the game. Here we are now against Kaikar, Wind's Fury, which is going to create a 1-1 Flying Spirit every time they cast a non-creature spell. Then they can sacrifice those spirits to get a red mana, so it could be kind of a stormy deck with a bunch of instants and sorceries. Might be trying to produce a bunch of mana out of nowhere with all the spirits. Cast a bunch of spells in one turn. Or it could just be like a prowess deck in general where it's just gonna... Um, play a bunch of spells and chip away at us with birds slowly over time. Instead of all in one big storm combo turn. We'll see. Harmonic Prodigy, is that a Shaman or Wizard? Yep. So as long as the Prodigy's on board, they get two 1-1 one -one Flyers every time they cast a non-creature spell from their commander. Which makes me quite tempted to just abrade the Prodigy, and I think I am going to do that. I don't need Yuri on the board until I'm going to sacrifice a permanent that turn anyway, so I can wait to cast Yuri till next turn. Play them alongside a land. Ooh, if I get a Sulphurous Springs, I'd rather just play a Lannery. Start trying to get a bunch of treasures. Our opponent does have the Play with Fire for Lannery. That's fine. The alternative would be that they play with fired our Yuri, and then Yuri's gonna cost four mana to play later and be very far behind that way as well. Okay. Could play Yuri and Unleash Fury. Which is very cute name-wise. Uh, I think I'd rather just play Dockside Chef this turn. So I'm going to play the Evolving Wilds here instead of the Fabled Passage, since the Fabled Passage will be an untapped land. Now that we have four more lands on board, it'll trigger a Yuri Sacrifice trigger and give us an untapped mana, which is very good. All right, Expressive Iteration draws them a couple cards, one of which is Monastery Mentor hitting the board right now. We get another red source with an axe in our hand. Fable of the Mirror Breakers, a sweet draw. Can't afford. Play that and an axe. 
I think I'd rather play the Fable. If I can only play one right now. Poke for three with our commander. They are down to 22. Pass the turn. There's a Mind Stone. Double trigger on Monastery Mentor. And there's Kaikar. They're going to pass the turn. There's nothing I really want to sack the Dockside Chef right now. Ooh, Ragavan! Um, Ragavan actually not the greatest thing ever right now. Because they're going to have a lot of 1-1s with prowess and a lot of 1-1s in the sky. I actually might even... I'll discard Ragavan in a land. Hit a Jadar? Jadar's pretty good here. Drop Jadar and Anax. Don't have the mana up for Unleash Fury. Well, it's a pretty good board state to have. You know, I suppose this is probably also a little greedy, but I don't think there's going to be a better opportunity. Ooh, no blocks. If they no block, then it plays beautifully. But even if they blocked, that would give us the treasure token we need to sack it to Dockside Chef, and that would be two sacrifice triggers, plus we draw a card, which is good. So I think that was a fine attack there. But yeah, we could have also unleashed Fury if they did block with Kaikar or something, thanks to the treasure. So you've got a showdown of the Scalds here, and it does look like they're a pretty stormy deck with stuff like Strike It Rich. Prismari Command also makes treasures. They can sacrifice their spirits for mana. Trying to get a Prowess Storm Off thing going here. Okay, they're going to Prismari Command to get a treasure, draw two, discard two. Reckless Impulse for another draw two. Alright, we gotta be all in on the uh, the combo kill here. Just try to draw into like a fling. If we do draw into a fling, then they're super dead. They're already done on board to fling. So fling or thud is the goal. Draw a Wrinkle and Torbrin. Eaten alive. These are not bad.
Let's go for it. Let's drop Rankle and Torbrin. Attack with them and our treasure producer. Attack with Yuri as well. Is this at no blocks? Okay, first strike trigger. Treasure, sacrifice, two more damage. We both sacrifice a creature now. So a Nax, I guess which buffs Yuri. Then I can unleash Fury, sacrificing one of these treasures and have one left over for eaten alive post-combat to sacrifice Yuri. See, so yeah, if, if they just don't block Yuri, then that's essentially like fling because yuri's gonna deal the normal damage and then we're gonna deal the sack damage after combat all right we're gonna go for it let's see they do have some treasure tokens up so they might have a bounce spell here they don't don't even have to sacrifice yuri that's just gonna be lethal Surprised they didn't even jump with some of those monks. They might have been getting greedy there and trying to do a storm off kill. Hitting us with a bunch of five, six power monks off all the prowess triggers. But I'll take it. Get through for the damage so we can just stack up a ton of damage out of nowhere there. Really nice stuff. Really nice stuff with Yuri. All right, here we are against Nissa, Resurgent Animist, one of the new commanders from Martian Sheen Aftermath. When they landfall, they can get a man of any color. Then they can start drawing elves or elementals from their deck. Pretty cool. We have a definite keep. Turn one Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, not something you get to do every day, but always a treat. Maybe not for our opponent, but definitely for us. Let's go, Ragavan. Get in there, monkey. We're just going to be using it to produce treasures. I don't really care too much about casting our opponent's cards, but maybe we'll hit something really good that we want to cast. And it's cast only, so we can't play lands. So I can play the land pre-combat here. Draw a Tamiyo Safekeeping. Well, if I really wanted to gain two life, I guess I could. There's Nyssa. Okay, here's a Haunted Ridge. I would ideally like to get in with Ragavan here. Sure, I'll sack the treasure here. Because I'll get a new treasure post-combat. And then I can still play Braids this turn. Or just hold up Infernal Grasp or Fling. Ragavan's just dumb. Ragavan is just a dumb magic card, and our opponent is going to scoop them up. That's just kind of what turn one Ragavan will do. Just the treasure production. We didn't even need to cast anything from their deck for Ragavan to not just be super, super stupid. Hit them for two, get a treasure. They play a creature. I'll blow it up, hit them for two, get a treasure. And just stay really, really ahead on mana from that. So that was really just Ragavan's game, but... 
As you can see, Ragaman also does complement our commander very, very well, where Yuri's just already a 3-3 here from those treasure tokens. And uh, we're just going to keep our opponent far behind, and they're just already over it. Well, that's going to do it for our look at Yuri, Master of the Review, today. Again, when I was building this deck, there were so many cards for Rakdos Sacrifice decks that there are a million iterations of this deck, a million ways you can build it. I went mostly for a treasure kind of oriented aspect as much as I could, as well as like the combo potential of Yuri with Thud, Fling, Oslith kind of stuff going on. But there's a tons of different ways you could build this. You could put some of the slower reanimator pieces like reassembling skeleton and stuff into here, sanitarium skeleton, cards like that that can consistently come back from the graveyard to be sacrificed over and over and be better for a long game. Cards like Priest of the Forgotten Gods. If you are going for a more creature-oriented version of this deck, you could run more creature token production with that. And again, if you're going for more creature sack, there's of course the premium creature sacrifice card of Yawgmoth, Thran, Physician. So tons of other cards that are super, super powerful that I didn't quite have the room to put in here with the way that I chose to build this deck. Definitely a commander that I would recommend for those of you who love Rakdos Sacrifice. And if you like Rakdos Sacrifice in general, there are multiple commanders for you and so many different ways to build these decks. You could go completely all in on the treasure theme with Kalein as the commander. You could go more mid-rangey with Rankle and Torbrin. You could go more, well, not really combo -y, but more tutory with Legomos. Try to search your library pr pretty consistently. And even just more straight-up aggressive going for wide board states with something like Judith. So pretty cool to play around with Yuri today, and it really showed off just how many cards there are to choose from for Black Red Sacrifice. There are so, so, so many options. It's, uh, it's wild. But that's going to do it for today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons very much for supporting this channel, as well as you for watching. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you more of these videos in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can join the Patreon in the link in the description below. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more. Magic Arena.